I think a work exists uh, between the maker and the viewer. My name is Patrick Doherty. I'm a sculptor. I have a good website, stickwork.net. We're here in Pease Park. Um, I've just finished my sculpture. I'm so happy to say we finished it today. We're going to call the piece Kippy IA. If we wanted a kind of a cowboy salutation uh, for the piece because it's here in, in Texas. I've been working about, oh, maybe 35 years since the early 80s. It's been my pleasure to have worked every day since then and worked on these kinds of large scale sapling sculptures. I've made a, maybe 200 and 85, 88, and uh, I've made them all over the world and all of the United States and do 10 works a year. They take three weeks each to build, so I've got about uh, two extra months in there and that's what I do my site visits. I have to make a visit for each piece that I'm gonna make in the upcoming year. Uh, the work seems to cast a spell over the public and all the kind of associated, associative feelings that they have when they see the work, usually personalized ones about bird nests and indigenous tribes and kisses under the lilac bush and and um, walks in the forest and, you know, other things that seem uh, kind of natural. Uh, we grew up in the woodlands in North Carolina. We have a lot of underbrush there. We're always building forts as children. And in that regard, uh, children usually play out the kind of shadow life of our hunting and gathering past that kids know everything about sticks. You know, I always think sculpture is kind of a problem-solving event. You know, there, you get a material and you try to get an idea and try to bring the two things together. Uh, after working such a, for such a long time with the material, it, I can almost think it and do it. You know, if my, if I, my brain thinks that my hands can start moving in that direction. So uh, we always set a project that's uh, that's open enough that there's some latitude within to make discovery. And as you uh, start trying to true the idea up, trying to save yourself from complete failure, uh, you start really reacting to the surfaces, uh, see where they're going, uh, reacting to the scale and trying to set a scale that fits the site try to imagine where people start seeing it from and uh, how close they have to be for the line quality to count. I uh, view these things as not only as having a touchstone of the forest where the material came from, but a kind of a, a large scale drawing with a kind of line logic where things seem to have continuity between inside and out and be uh, thoroughly drawn. Uh, when I look at a site, then um, I might try to remember how I feel when I first see the site. I might make thumbnail sketches. I might do word associations to try to come up with certain ideas that go with that site. And within that idea, we start to explore the materials right off. Uh, we start bending things this way and that, trying to figure out how much lean can go on something, what's more exciting than another, and then start reacting to the surface as we see it. And the piece here in the park, uh, you know, the idea was to make a series of corners. Um, I, I was joking that I wanted to build a cathedral, but I just got to the corners of it. The exciting thing about a corner is that if you can't see around it, it builds a great deal of intrigue. So as you walk in one uh, door of these corners, you're not really clear where it's going. So as you come, go around the corner and come out, you see another corner, you see another opening. And so uh, you proceed through this as you might through a labyrinth. You know, there's a level of fantasy uh, that you weave into the surface uh, of what people have in their subconscious mind. The imagery of uh, things that lay low, like uh, simple shelter, hmm. the Garden of Eden, uh, desire to go down a woodland path and just kind of disappear across the forest curtain, hmm. uh, beliefs that you could kind of communicate with birds and talk to other animals. Uh, those are kind of low-level fantasies that everybody has. So. Um, I think these, this work uh, kind of calls upon or stirs up some of that, that feeling. 
we've had a, a large number of people working on this sculpture. There's a lot of people from the community, a lot of the folks that live in these houses nearby. Uh, some people from across town, some university students. Uh, you know, uh, we always have a few people come from out of state, you know, because they see it on the internet and just put their name on the sign-up sheet and get over here to work. And uh, one thing that I have is no doors to close. I don't have any studio doors to close, so the work gets conducted in full public view. One thing that does is really allow people to get to know the work as it is built. Uh, everybody likes to see something built, you know, and got to participate in the process either directly or they're living vicariously through myself or the their neighbors who are working on it. So, you know, there's a, a level of of visual participation and people can walk up and talk to you and say, say, what the hell are you doing? Or I love it or, you know, whatever it is. So I, I love that nexus where somebody walks up, up from the street and then they start talking to somebody that's working on it and they all both talk to me and then uh, I go to work and then they go to work and maybe we draw the person off the street to start helping too. <laughs> Having people from the community uh, react to it, having your volunteers be part of it, uh, have my son Sam work with me, it all ends up to be a, a, great, a great wave to ride, you know.